morning for me as well. Uh, it's great being here and thank you all for attending this event. Uh, it's really sure it's compatible. The slides are not helping a lot, but uh, let's try to see. So, as I said, it's all about connectivity, but actually, we feel it's slightly a bit more of that. Uh, as Satani said, I'm coming from the software space, so some may say, so we're talking about networks and software, what are these things? Two things do it together. Well, actually, uh, nowadays, software, IT, ICT, and networks came together because this is, let's say, the glue that's making all this technology move, uh, move forward. I think that the previous speaker, like uh, this minister or the ambassador, stressed the fact that ICT is a key factor for growth. If we try just to back up with figures, we'll see some charts from the, from the World Economic Forum. And uh, these guys have come up with an index, they call it Network Readiness Index, which is somehow a figure that shows you how good work you are doing in ICT, how well you are adapting to this technology, you are uh, using it, and how the, the users are uh, reacting to it. This little red uh, box there shows more or less where, where Albania stands in this, in this area, and it shows that it, it's moving closer to being within the average, but it's not there yet. Now, this NRI is, a, is a quite a complex index that comprises of a number of factors. It's about 10 of them. And if you pay a closer look to the chart, you will see that one of them is broadband infrastructure and connectivity. And it, it shows there that this is one of the areas where there seems to be a lot of room for growth and improvement. And uh, actually, this is why we believe that broadband deployment and intelligent broadband deployment will be the one that will really fuel the economic growth of the area and will give all the, the, the ammunition to business to grow in this particular region. And actually, it has been demonstrated that broadband penetration, broadband usage, and GDP are closely related one to the other. Now, I'm not sure if it's broadband that drives the GDP or GDP that drives the broadband, but the bottom line is that these two things are coupled together. So, in a nutshell, you need, let's say, to invest in infrastructure, in IT technologies, in ICT technologies, in order to boost the, the business. Uh, so, we come to the notion of next generation national broadband networks and how this can be deployed. The national broadband networks, meaning the networks that can be deployed national-wide, have a single network that can be used for a number of users, users being local administration, the government, enterprises, or communication service providers, is the tool that will allow the growth and productivity of the national economy. Now, one might expect, okay, let's have the companies invest in that and build their own networks and do this magic thing. But the, the problem might be is that the, the, the amount, the investment, the volume of the investment that needs to be made to build all these national uh, broadband networks might be kind of intimidating to the, to the private companies. And also, as it was mentioned, I think, from, the, from Mr. Ambassador earlier, you need to have the proper regulation framework in place so that all these uh, broadband networks can really bring the benefit back. So, the concept, let's say, that we feel like it's working is having these sponsors that will be the drivers on how this national broadband network will be deployed. It doesn't mean that they are the owners or the operators of these networks. It means they are the entity that will drive it, will set the rules on how these networks will be built, will set the rules on how these networks will actually be operated and served among the users. And um, it doesn't have to be the state, it doesn't have to be the government. It can be a, a, an intelligent combination between the public sector and the private sector. And these two can work together so that they build this kind of, uh, this kind of infrastructure. Uh, of course, this is not an idea that, no, it's just being developed. It has been around the world for some time. You see it being developed, uh, delivered in different models, shapes, and sizes around the world. So, for example, in uh, countries like the US or Germany, you don't see that many national broadband networks. You see that most of those are being developed by private companies. But you go on the other, to, to, to the other side, what you see in countries like, for example, Japan or Korea, where actually it is the state that is driving the build out of these networks to be used by the country itself, by its users, the end users or companies or service providers or administration itself. Uh, so, 
what that means? Okay, let's build this network. But if we try to build it in the traditional way, the way we're used to, like everybody's laying their own fiber, they're putting their equipment, they have their own tariffs, and they try to sell for their own sake, this is where things start to get a bit tricky. So definitely, to build this network, really, we want to work hard, but obviously, we also want to work smart. And what we mean by that? Probably you're familiar with the uh, logos you see over there, like uh, Google Drive, or Dropbox, or Netflix, or, uh, I don't know, or iCloud. These are cloud services. It means that there are some companies that have this infrastructure somewhere, you're using it as if it were your own. Your company has a company.com email address. You've never seen the email server itself. It's somewhere in the cloud, but you still use it as if it, uh, as, uh, it was your own. So now imagine that we try to apply the same principle on the network itself. It means that more or less we try to virtualize the network. The network itself is not something that I build for my own use, it's some resource that I use from, from the cloud. It might sound like it's a bit like magic to be honest, but uh, this is one way that we have seen that it makes things go smoother. And hopefully now we have also the technology to support it. We have what is called network function virtualization, which is actually the idea of having the network being virtualized and shared among the users. You have one infrastructure, but you use it as it was your own individual uh, property, just as you use your email or your storage when it's up in the cloud. And you also have, you may have heard of software-defined network, of, the, of the, the technology that allows the data transfer to be separated from the business logic. So that means that this gives you all the flexibility and the security and the elasticity you need in order to have a business growing uh, effectively. Now, uh, let's try to give an example of how that works. Uh, so, let's assume that now we have, a, we have a company with a headquarters and a branch. The traditional way to have them talking to each other so that they can serve their ERP or have access to the internet is that we would have a, a dedicated line from the branch going to the headquarter through some communication service provider and then the headquarter would have some connectivity to the internet so that all these people can share it. Which is a great idea, the cost is, uh, let's say, the cost is minimal, the, the office is minimal, but the quality of service that we're getting is not the one that we would really be looking for. Imagine these guys over here trying to do a video conference or use some bandwidth intensive application. It just wouldn't work. We go to the other, let's say, end of the spectrum, where we say, okay, let's duplicate everything. We have our own internet connectivity. We don't rely on the connectivity with the headquarters, so we have better quality of experience. But hey, now all our costs are doubled. We pay two times the communication service provider. We have twice the equipment we need to use that. So it means that we have better quality, but the cost is possibly even prohibitive. So we go now to the, to the virtual way of doing stuff, which means let's have a, a service provider, a communication service provider that provides all this NFT, all these virtualized network infrastructures. It means that I can dynamically set up a link between my branch and my headquarters. I can make it bigger or smaller depending on the capacity and the needs that I have. And I also have my own internet connection and I turn it on and off as I need, exactly as we do with our cloud store today. We may have more terabytes or less terabytes, but it's all dynamic and flexible. And now imagine that we don't only get network connectivity, we also get network applications like uh, our firewall, our video streaming application, our security endpoint. So this now adds all the good points, all the benefits of the, of the examples we mentioned earlier, and it's all done automatically and, uh, and dynamically. And this is how companies like Google or Amazon Web Services or Microsoft are offering this kind of services today. Uh, so, what is the, the idea, let's say, and the vision that we're talking about? The vision is by assigning sponsors that will drive, that will facilitate the build out of these national wide uh, broadband networks. And these people will only focus in setting the right, uh, right framework for these networks to be built. After that, they will be sharing these resources and this infrastructure with other users, the end users, the enterprises, public administration, other government entities. So everybody will be, will be a user of that. They will be able to manage it as if it were their own network, but practically it will be one physical network with a number of virtual networks. And obviously the benefit of that is that 
Now the users don't really have to focus on the network and the technology. They just want to focus on their core business, on what they're doing and what they know best. They can leave the technology to other entities that are better than trained for that. And of course, the last point is that you came from economies of scale. You, you build one big network, which obviously has the benefit of economies of scale, but practically, you, you, you allow num a number of businesses to use it, which on their own would not have the capability, the capability to build their own network. But now they can still use its benefits and this technology to their, uh, for their own use. Now, of course, this NFV is kind of a new thing, and as a new thing, it means that it's still being worked on. So this is why, for anybody to work on that, you will need to rely on the experience of a number of companies and standardization forms that have been built on top of it, you may have heard of Open Daylight, of Team Forum, of uh, Metro Internet Forum, and uh, organizations like this. The bottom line is that it's not something that you would like to go on and do it on your own. You would really need to, to work with the bodies, all the companies and organizations that have this kind of knowledge and they can share it with you. And obviously, we're talking about nationwide projects, we're talking about working with the public and the private sectors, which as most of us know can be a daunting task and quite challenging. And uh, the bottom line is that partner with the right people and the right organizations that can do that. Now, in, uh, in our company, Intercom Telecom, we feel that uh, network visualization is a road what, that we can take and we should take. And this is why we have invested in this, in this area. We are uh, we're proud sponsors of the Open Daylight Forum and actually we're one of the contributors in the specific area of uh, stress testing and performance because obviously once you go cloud, performance is one of the key factors and this is why we have invested in that. And um, we're, uh, we're one of the companies that have been, uh, let's say, lucky enough to be involved in a number of public uh, projects and also nationwide. And as Mr. Bacchardo said earlier, it's kind of the, the experience and the know-how that we'll be very happy to share and discuss with anybody that is uh, interested in that. I know that time is pressing, so we'll try to close this here, but one thing I'd like all of us to take, let's say, leaving this, this session is that the network visualization is something that is happening and we feel that it's better to be part of it than being outside of it. So, having said that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm passing the floor to the next speaker. Thank you.